This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. Blessed send Sunday and Advent to you. This is, by request from the audience, the second sermon of St. Bernard of Clairvaux on Advent. Here he will talk about the incarnation of our Lord. Here he will talk about Our Lady's role in all of this. Again, his language is pretty plain for the most part, so I think I don't need to explain too much of it to you. Just know that these sermons of his are legendary. These are the things that have been carefully preserved in the, I think, nine centuries or so since he gave these sermons and passed on with the language only being updated in terms of, you know, the nuances of modern translations and things. Let me know what you think of this at the end, please. On the words to Achaz, ask the assign. Advent Sermon Number 2, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And the Lord spoke again to Achaz, saying, Ask the assign of the Lord thy God, either unto the depth of hell or unto the height above. And Achaz said, I will not ask, and I will not tempt the Lord. We have heard Isaiah persuading King Achaz to ask for a sign from the Lord, either in the depth of hell or in the height of above. We have heard the king's answer, having the semblance of piety, but not its reality. On this account he deserves to be rejected by him who sees the heart, and to whom the thoughts of men confess. I will not ask, he says, and I will not tempt the Lord. Achaz was pumped up with the pomp of the regal throne, and skilled in the cunning words of human wisdom. Isaiah has therefore heard the words, Go tell that fox to ask for himself a sign from the Lord unto the depths of hell. For the fox had a hole, but it was in hell, where, if he had descended, he would find one who would catch the wise in his cunning. Again, Go, says the Lord, to that bird, and let him ask for a sign in the heights above, for the bird hath his high nest. But though he ascend to heaven, he will find there him who resisteth the proud, and trampleth with might on the necks of the lofty and the high-minded. Ache has refused to ask a sign of that sovereign power or that incomprehensible depth. Wherefore the Lord himself promised the house of David a sign of goodness and charity, that those whom the exhibition of his power could not terrify, nor the manifestations of his wisdom subdue, might be allured by his exceeding love. In the words, depths of hell, may be not unfitly portrayed the ch charity, greater than which no man hath, that Christ should at death descend even unto hell for his friends. And in this God would teach Achaz either to dread the majesty of him who reigns in the highest, or to embrace the charity of him who descends to the lowest. Grievous, therefore, alike to God and man is he who will not, neither think on majesty with fear nor meditate on charity with love. Wherefore the prophet says, The Lord himself shall give you a sign a sign resplendent alike with majesty and love. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is interpreted, God with us. O Adam, flee not away, for God is with us. Fear not, O man, nor be afraid to hear his name. It is God with us, with us in the likeness of our nature, with us for our service and for our profit. For us he is come as one of us, passable like unto us. It is said he will eat butter and honey, as if to say he shall be a little one, fed with infant's food, that he may know how to reject evil and choose good. As in the case of the forbidden tree, the tree of transgression. So now we hear of an option between good and evil, but the choice of the second Adam is better than that of the first. Choosing the good, he refused the evil. Not as he who loved cursing, and it came upon him, and he would not have blessing, and it was far from him. In the prophecy that he would eat butter and honey, you may notice the choice of this little one. But may his grace support us, that what he grants us is the power to understand. He may likewise enable us to explain. From milk we obtain two substances, butter and cheese. Butter is oily and moist. Cheese, on the contrary, is hard. Our little one knew well how to, ch how to choose when, eating the butter, he did not taste the cheese. Behold, therefore, how he chose the best. He assumed our nature free from all corruption of sin. Of sinners we read that their heart is curdled as milk. The purity of their nature is corrupted by the fermentation of malice and iniquity. And now let us turn to the honey. Our bee feeds among lilies and dwells in the flowery country of the angels. 
This bee flew to the city of Nazareth, which is interpreted a flower. He came to the sweet-smelling flower of perpetual virginity. He settled upon it. He clove to it. But bees, besides their sweet honey, have likewise their sharp sting. The prophet that sang of the mercy and judgment of the Lord knew that this bee had a sting as well as honey. Nevertheless, when he descended to us, he brought honey, only that is mercy, not judgment, so that to the disciples who wished to call down fire from heaven on the cities that would not receive him, he answered, The Son of Man is not come to judge the world, but to save it. Our bee had no sting in his mortal life. Amid the extremity of insult, he showed mercy, not judgment. Christ then may be symbolized both as a bee and as the flower springing from the rod. And as we know, the rod is the virgin mother of God. This flower, the son of the virgin, is white and ruddy, chosen out of thousands. It is a flower on which the angels desire to look, the flower whose perfume shall revive the dead, the flower, as he himself declares, of the field, not of the garden. This flower grew and flourished in the field, independent of all human culture, unsown by the hand of man, untilled by the spade, or fattened by moisture. So did the womb of Mary's blossom. As a rich pasture, it brought forth the flower of eternal beauty, whose freshness shall never fade nor see corruption, whose glory is to everlasting. O sublime virgin rod that raisest thy holy head aloft, even to him who sitteth on the throne, even to the Lord of majesty, is this not wonderful? For thou hast planted thy roots deeply in the soil of humility. O truly celestial plant, then, which none more precious, none more holy. O true tree of life, alone that deemed worthy to bear the fruit of salvation. Thou art caught, a wicked serpent, caught in thy own cunning. Thy falsity is laid bare. Two evils hadst imputed to thy creator. Thou hadst defamed him by envy and by lying, but in both imputations thou art convicted a liar. He to whom thou hadst promised that he should not die, did die, and the truth of the Lord remaineth forever. And now answer, if thou canst, what tree could God forbid man, seeing he denied him not this chosen rod, this sublime fruit? For he that spared not his own son, how hath he not with him given us all things? It is now surely clear how the virgin is the royal way by which the Savior has drawn near to us, coming forth from her womb as a bridegroom from his bridal chamber. Holding on, therefore, to this way, let us endeavor to ascend to him by her, through him whom he descended to us. Let us seek his grace through her by whom he came to succor our need. O blessed finder of grace, mother of life, mother of salvation, may we th through thee have access to thy Son, that through thee we may be received by him who through thee was given to us. May thy integrity and purity excuse before him the stain of our corruption. May thy humility, so pleasing to God, obtain from him the pardon of our vanity. May thy abundant charity cover the multitude of our iniquity, and thy glorious fruitfulness supply our indigence of merits. Our Lady, our Mediatrix, our Advocate, reconcile us to this to thy Son, commend us to thy Son, present us to thy Son, by the, thy grace thou hast found, by thy prerogative thou didst merit, by thy mercy thou didst bring forth, obtain, O blessed one, that he who vouchsafed to become partaker of our infirmity and misery, may through the intercession make us partakers of his blessedness and glory, Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who is God blessed above all, forevermore. Amen. And there you have St. Bernard of Clairvaux's second sermon on Advent. And I'm always left astonished when I read these things the first time before I record them for you, because you don't hear sermons like this anymore, even really among most of the mainline traditional orders, including the SSPX. You just don't hear this kind of thing that much anymore. And I almost wonder if that's just a kind of consequence of the age we live in, if we have blinded ourselves and made ourselves not susceptible to or open to these kind of teachings. Curious what you think of that. So let me know in the comments if you think I'm off base or if I'm on the money on that. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Though I have fair warning, if this is the first time you found my channel, day to day I cover the ongoing heresies in the church and things from a traditionalist perspective. So if that does not sound appealing to you, just leave a like and I'll uh, see you next week, which I'll probably bring another sermon of St. Bernardo Clairvaux next week. But otherwise, like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Sharing this on social media helps a lot as well. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.